fueling my addiction. I want to record there so badly. But if I dare try, I may as well fall to my death. <laughs> or not be able to get back up. That's a good 20 foot drop right there. <laughs> hey everyone, so today's topic is going to be a bit of an interesting one. One that you probably might not have expected, but if you read the title, you'd have seen that today we're going to be talking a bit about service dogs. Now, on and off throughout my life, I've been looking at service dogs. Mostly emotional ones when I was younger, but now that I've actually got a mental issue that actually does affect my daily life. And I have never been officially diagnosed for it, because Corona actually stopped me from getting diagnosed properly. But my therapist and everyone around me agrees that I probably do have PTSD. The, ki the severe kind, I don't know what kind, but basically what happens when I have a PTSD attack, or I'm going to call it panic attack, is I actually get something called pseudo seizures in my arm. Where my arm starts shaking wildly and I can't control it all. Sometimes if it's severe enough I actually lose motion and control in this arm because it actually gets paralyzed and that's not really a good thing. And another thing is that I hate, I hate how the world has made triggers sort of like a cringe thing, but it's really the only way I can, you know, call it that. So, and unfortunately, my triggers for my PTSD is very, very common. Like, things you see on a daily basis actually get me. And unfortunately, in the town I live in, everyone owns, at least everyone seems to own one of my triggers, which is horrifying. <sighs> Most often when I have a panic attack, I actually go physically mute. And I knew no, a tiny bit of sign language, but unfortunately I do have a learning disability that prevents me from learning written languages. But sign language does seem to be one that I can learn pretty easily. So, the general thing I want to talk about is getting a service dog. I think it's personally a good idea for me to get one. So the two breeds I've been looking at for service dogs um, are Norwegian Elk Hound, or Elk Hound and the uh, Swiss White Shepherd. Now, unfortunately, those two are very hard to find, but from what I understand, I've done a lot of research on both of them. They seem to be two pretty good breeds for what I'm looking for with PTSD. Anyways, let's talk about the next thing I wanted to talk about, which was being androgynous as shit. So, it may not look like it, but I'm actually a male who's extremely androgynous to the female side, and I personally hate it, to the point where I'm actually if this doesn't go away in a few years, I'm actually tempted to go see if I can get on, like, hormone therapy to get myself fixed up a bit. Because being this androgynous means that... So people think that you're an FTM trans most of the time, but I'm really not. I'm just that androgynous that it kind of sucks. To the point where I actually do have to, like, go with more of the female-to-male trans, like, tit tricks and stuff. Like, where you have to deepen your voice quite a bit, or some stuff like that, or change the way you walk, just because I'm that androgynous. Alright, so, I have a mermaid mask. It's got the scales and tail, it's all, it's a feminine mask. It's a pretty people in society. I don't count anything that's like hobbies, looks, etc. as masculine or feminine. I count it as you being you. So... You know, I'm growing my hair out to be long. And I'm a male. I don't care about that. I want it to be longer. Because, well, I'm trying to go sort of emo, and I see myself a certain way in five years. I'm trying to go for that certain way I see myself in five years. And you know what? I like mermaids. I like a lot of girly things. And I don't count that as being girly. I count that as personally being me. And outside of my channel, where my name is Ashling of A's, where Ashling is actually the top female name in Sw uh, Sweden, I think it is? I just chose that name because of its meaning. And there's this character I liked in a show called Thrilling Intent. That's where I learned the name Ashling. And it just stuck. So hopefully I can, you know, fix my androgyny and now that I've recorded this, People kind of will understand that I'm not a girl if people see this video. Alright, 
On to the next topic, because I want to keep at least three topics per video unless I have absolutely nothing to talk about. My next thing is what I plan to do for the upcoming months for about Halloween and all that is my next costume idea. Now, as many of you know, if you follow my Instagram, I am working on a character named Gravity, who is pers my personal persona. And his costume has taken a while just because of how complex it is, and I have to do it all by hand. I have no machines, nothing like that. And fortunately, he's not going to probably be done until February, which is going to suck because of just how much I have to hand sew. So my idea is one... I'm able to get paid. Stimulus check-wise, it's been since June. I sl I've only recently got approved for it, finally. But apparently they're eight weeks behind and I'm not going to get paid till probably like Christmas. Just the way things go and are now. <sighs> My plan was to actually get a resin base. And just to build off of that. Now something I actually want to do with this character is to use real antlers. Now I'm going to put a character a picture of the character right here. I'm gonna also put my plans up here as well in a minute. My plan was to actually stick real antlers on the base. I've been looking all over Etsy and stuff for any sheddings because I'd prefer not to use an animal that was hunted and killed just for you know its horns and stuff. So I've been looking on Etsy for sheddings. Unfortunately on Etsy there's a lot of red deer sheddings and this character does not fit at all red deer. They fit more of a Sika, Sika, I don't know how to say it, Sika horns. I guess. Unfortunately, those are hard to find. But I'm going to do my best to find them. And what I was thinking of doing is actually going exploring into the woods and finding stuff like that. Hopefully I'll be able to, you know, do that. The only reason I want to do that is because, well, for one, I don't want to pay around 55 bucks for a pair of antlers from Dream Vision Creations when I'm not sure if they properly match the character. So I thought got the idea of just using real horns. You know, they're only a couple pounds, and I have a 16 pound head, which I'm pretty certain isn't normal. My neck's strong enough to handle that stuff, and a fursuit head generally weighs around five pounds. At least the one, the heaviest one I've ever worn is about eight pounds. And I'm able to do it with that. I can handle a weight. As long as it's not like a tight head, I've got migraines and that triggers migraines for me. So, you know, why not use real horns as long as they don't come from- if they come from a good place, so roadkill and stuff like that. You know? Anyways, here are my plans for the creature. Here's the art. And here's the plans. So this character is my secondary persona. They have a chicken family, they have a companion named Chess, and while they may not look like a fox, they are in fact a fox that just happens to have a giant skull tail and antlers. Nothing out of the ordinary, you know? Alright, so that's all I wanted to talk about for today. Uh, the upcoming videos are going to be my other kin journey and first day of school. Unfortunately, first day of school has taken a while because, well, I haven't had the motivation to put it all together, but they're all recorded. I mostly just gotta do the script for, well, you know, I'm just gonna wing the other kin journey. I know the story m enough to be able to wing it. And then for school one, it's just been stressful lately. But hey, they're both recorded, they're both almost ready to go. You guys will be seeing them soon. Anyways, Hashing of A's, signing off. <laughs>